So let's do something similar to what we did before where we wanted to determine the size of the sample needed to achieve a certain desired margin of error for a population mean. So we did that for, for population mean um, inferencing or, or, or determining what that interval would be for the population mean from a, from a given sample. Um, we can also determine, uh, given that this is the equation for the margin of error for proportions, we can determine what the sample size um, we can make calculations that will help us figure out what the sample size should be um, to meet some desired margin of error. For example, if you're looking to determine how the population is going to vote for a particular candidate um, and you want to sample some individuals, how many do you need to achieve um, a, a given margin of error? So if you decide that 83% um, are going to vote for a particular candidate, if that margin of error from your sample is plus or minus, um, let's say, 15, so 83 plus or minus 15, that's a pretty wide range of values. So typically in um, polls or you know, when when, um, when they're looking to get a feel for how the population wants to move toward an issue or vote toward for an issue or not it's usually on the order of three to four percent that we're looking for so they know that there's a given number that they need to hit when they make those phone calls to figure out what your feelings and 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 preferences are on, on certain issues so Let's go ahead and see what um, that calculation looks like, where we want to determine a margin of error, uh, as a sample size, to meet some desired margin of error. So what we're going to do is assume that we want some given confidence interval. If it's if it's 95% in our confidence interval, then we know that this is going to be 1.96. So given some confidence interval for a population proportion, um, let's see what we can do in the way of solving for the sample size. So the first thing we'd want to do is um, square both sides. And so if we square both sides, um, what we're left with is um, this equation here. And if we want to solve for n, if I multiply both sides by n, at least I can cancel that out over here. And I also know that I want to um, isolate n by itself. So I, I can do this in one fell swoop. I'll just multiply both sides by n over e squared. Instead of multiplying by n and then dividing by e squared, I can just do them both together. Um, and what that gives me on this side, on the left here, is just simply n is equal to z squared alpha over 2 the sample proportion and the complement of that sample proportion um, so this is 0.3 the other one's 0.7 if this is 0.2 the other one's 0.8 right those two will always add up to 8 but they're complements so that's how we determine the sample size um, that we're going to work with to hit a desired um, um, margin of error. Now, one challenge to this equation is, again, you're, this is pre-poll, and if it's prior to even getting any information, how do you know what the proportion is, right? You're trying to figure out what the size is 
um, should be of a particular group um, to get a margin of error and then once you have the desired size you go figure out what the percentage of individuals are that vote want to vote for a certain issue in a certain way um, so we don't know what p hat is we don't know what the proportion is um, so what we're going to do is um, make an assumption or just take as a reasonable starting point we're going to take p hat to be um, 1.5 or I mean it's one half or 0 0.5 and if p hat is we assume that that's a reasonable value and if p hat is one half that means that q hat is one minus that and then those two together um, p hat times q hat is one half times one half or 0 0.25 or 1 quarter so we can take that 1 quarter and use that assumed value so let's rewrite that so the sample size is going to be a function of the confidence interval and then this is going to be 0 0.25 and then this here is the desired margin of error. So if we don't know what those proportions are, we're going to use this formula. So we have an example um, that we can work with. Um, there was a CNN poll. I'll try to bring this up in a in a little bit, but there was a CNN poll, um, and this one came from 2013. Um, this article, and it involved uh, Chris Christie and Andrew Cuomo. And these are all potential um, candidates for president. Um, and then the other one in the mix was Clinton, Hillary Clinton in 2013. And so early on, this I think was in November, um, it's an article that was November uh, 18th, 2013. And so in this poll, um, the margin of error that they reported was 0 0.035. And so in the confidence level was uh, 95%. So we're assuming a 95% confidence level. Um, and let me tell you what they were asking. Um, they were asking voters um, uh, who it is that they were most likely to support. Um, and in this polling, they found, and we won't use this value in our calculations, but they found that um, 56% percent of the candidates question said that they would support Hillary Clinton um, and so 56 percent said that they would vote um, support Hillary Clinton so there's some margin of error that's associated with that so it was plus or minus 3.5 so plus or minus 3.5 um, so anywhere from 52.5 up to 59.5 so that gives you a feel for what percentage of candidate or voters um, would have supported Hillary Clinton in this particular New York poll so the question is how many did they sample 
um, and we can work backwards for this one. Right? If I use the formula that we have here, since I know the margin of error, um, and since I know the confidence interval, I can tell you um, how many, um, at least on the order, then some reasonable guess what how many they were, uh, how many they actually talked with. Um, to come up with these values. So 1.96, 95% confidence interval, um, corresponds to a Z critical value of 1.96, and the margin of error reported was 0 0.035, and so that is consistent with what we see here. Um, did Let's make sure, z, oh, z squared, n is equal to z squared, and did I lose that? Let's put it in here, don't forget it there, z squared, that's important. And now let's complete this. And so if you punch these numbers in, um, 784. So the article um, that referenced or that, that presented and summarized this was located, this is a shortened URL, let's see if it still works, 18i, and then this is a k and a 2. So if you go in and um, kind of a Google 2013 Christie Cuomo Clinton presidential poll, you'll um, see this article that comes up on CNN. I'm not so sure that this link works anymore, but you'll see the article comes up and it's about 800 that they had to um, sample to to get that margin of error that they that they ended up with. I think they say they sampled, um, I think it's 800, I don't have it in front of me at this moment, but so that gives you a feel though for how you can hit a desired margin of error. Um, it doesn't do you any good to, um, to report that 56% want to vote for a particular candidate and having a margin of error that's so wide that it just doesn't give you any useful information. Um, one last example um, of how you could use this formula. Um, this one might have come from your homework. Let's say that you have a margin of error that you want to hit that's 0 0.02 confidence level. Um, is 95% and once again P is unknown so P and Q are unknown. If they are known then you can um, use the original formula. Uh, you don't have to uh, use 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 you could just use the original formula. So given that P and Q are unknown um, we can plug these values in. Um, it's once again the 0 0.25 and so 0 0.25 squared or 0 0.25 and then 1.96 squared is what we have. So 1.96 squared, let's just kind of 1.96 squared and then times 0 0.25 all over 0 0.02. That value that we end up with, if you crunch the numbers on this, it's going to be 2400.91. Um, now, we can't choose 0 0.9, a fraction of a person. So do we, do we choose 2400 or do we choose 2401? And if you round up 
um, versus rounding down. If we're, in this case, we're really just going to choose the next integer. We're going to take the ceiling of this and go to the next integer. By choosing um, 2401 and choosing the larger number versus 2400, that guarantees that we do no worse than that margin of error. If you were to try 2400, you'll get a margin of error um, that might be a little bit worse than this. And if you try um, 2401, you'll get a margin of error that's a little bit better. So you can kind of work backwards and do the math, but the value that you're going to choose then will be 2400. Um, t not 2400, but 2401. Round up to the next integer.